Hi, it's Mr. H. In this video, we're going to look at how to graph a sinusoidal function in degrees, but using the box method, which is a fairly efficient method to be able to graph things. The question is the same as the one I used in my last video where I talked about how to use transformations. It says, describe the transformations in the order that you need to apply them to transform y equals sine x to y equals 3 times sine 2x minus 60 degrees plus 4, clearly indicating a, k, c, and d, and sketch one cycle. The key here is not only to list the transformations, but we also want to uh, indicate what those values in the equation do to the amplitude, the period, starting value, and equation of the axis. So let's pull out the values that we found. So I've just written the equation there at the top of the grid, and the a value being 3 means it's vertically stretched by a factor of 3, which means the amplitude is 3. So that's one of the first pieces of information. The next thing is we use the k value to determine the period. Because it's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over k, or a half in this case, the period is 360 times that factor of a half, or 180 degrees. We know it's been shifted 60 degrees to the right, and so that helps us indicate our starting value. We are going to start at x equals 60 degrees. And then the last piece of information is that because it shifted 4 units up, the c value is 4, that means the equation of the axis is at y equals 4, and therefore, because the amplitude is 3, it's going to be 3 above that and 3 below that. So up to 7 and down to 1. So we take all this information and we simply draw a box. I say simply, but it requires some thought. I'm going to start with the y values because I think for most people those are the easiest ones to determine. So the equation of the axis is y equals 4. So I'm going to go up by every square being uh, a half or every two squares being 1. So there's my equation of my axis. I'm going to put a dotted line right along that equation of the axis, all the way across here. And that's going to be where it goes above, above and below. I'm going to go all the way up to 7, as we noted. 7's up here. I'm going to put the dotted line at 7. That's going to be the max values. And then the minimum values are going to occur at 1. So I'm going to put a dotted line there at 1. So in other words, this wave function is going to go no higher than 7 and no lower than 1. So it's going to be within that top is 7, bottom is 1. So there's the top and bottom of the box. Now let's see where the box starts and ends. We say that it's been shifted 60 degrees right. And we know that the period has to be 180 degrees. So that means that if it starts at 60 degrees, that needs to end one cycle 180 degrees later. And so 180 degrees later is at 240 degrees. So we're going to go from 60 to 240. So that shouldn't have us think about the scale now. And you'll see that on this particular scale, it fits rather nicely to go up by tens. So I'm going to draw it every three squares is 30 degrees. And I need to go all the way up to 240. 40, which is right there. So I'm going to start at 60 and I'm going to go all the way up to 240. And that's the most important thing that make sure that this is your full period. If it's not the full period of 180 degrees, then in this case, then you've made a mistake. And that's the most common mistake I see people make. So our box is going to be this right here, where these exterior lines all come together. We're going to draw one full cycle is going to fit in this box. One full cycle fits in this box. Always. We're always going to have it work this way by doing this process. So we know that it is sine. So because it is a sine function, that means that it starts at the equation of the axis. If it was cosine, it would start at a max. And then think about the a value for a minute. If the a value was negative, that would uh, make it go the opposite. So if it was a cosine starting at a max, if the a value was negative, it would start down at a minimum. In this case, we're starting there. And because it's positive, sine goes up from there. If it was negative, sine would go down from there. So what I need to do now is I need to determine how I'm going to break this down into the five parts. 
So I need to go from 60 to 180. I need to find the midpoint. The midpoint from 60 to 180 is going to be 150 degrees. So it's right there. And then I can find the midpoint of each of these. And so we're going to have 45 more than 60, which is 105 degrees right there. 45 more than 150, which is 200 and, uh, or sorry, 195 degrees right there. And so those are where our key points are going to land on, right? We're literally always break that up into the quarters, and that gives us our five key points. So I've got my first and last point. Let's add the others now. Because the sine function, it's going up. Again, if the A was negative, our first point would be down at the bottom. The next point comes back to the equation of the axis. And the next point is down here at the bottom right there. And so now it's just a matter of drawing a curve through those points like so. And so this is the function y equals 3 sine 2x minus 60. Put the degrees out there. x minus 60 uh, plus 4. So if it asks for one cycle, you don't need to start it at the x value being 0. However, if it asks you to start that cycle at the x value being 0, you could simply use this pattern and go back with it. We know that every point is 45 degrees more than the previous, so if I trace this back, I have to go back 45 degrees to 15 degrees. If I go back 45 degrees more than that, I go back to negative 30, which is right about there, and that's where I'd be back at the equation of the axis. So you could trace that like so, recognizing that that the pattern it's going to look like. And so what I'll finish off now with is just showing you how that compares to the original y equals sine x. So in blue at the bottom there you can see y equals sine of x. You can see the amplitude was originally 1, it's now 3, so it's been vertically stretched by a factor of 3. The k value is 2, so it was 360 degrees and now the period has become 180 degrees, so it's half of what it was. It's been shifted 60 degrees to the right. So originally we started the equation of the axis uh, at 0, and now it's starting the equation of the axis at 60. And we also see that c equals 4. It's been shifted the equation of the axis up 4 units. And so that is how we can use the box method, and that's an efficient method to be able to draw things without having to show all the transformations. And that's something that you can definitely use for this course in grade 11, and again, continuing next year in grade 12.